Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to the final tutorial. This is going to be about how to render your character. So lighting your character is not the same as in an environment. You really wanna enhance the features of your character and I'm gonna show you how. So the first thing we need though is some sort of backdrop. What I'm gonna do is go into the side view and I'm going to use a create curve, EP curve tool. Now I have demonstrated this before in different types of lighting, but the idea behind this is that we're gonna be creating what's called an infinity curve, which is gonna give us a nice transition from the floor to the ceiling and give us a, ni and a nice curvature so the shadow is not a sharp line, which is very distracting. So the next thing I'm gonna do is right click control vertices and just kinda make sure this is a straight line as well as the floor being a straight line. So grab those vertices and just kind of crush them together and just kind of move these vertices around so it's a little bit more of a curve. All right, now that we have that, I'm going to select it, move it aside, duplicate it, and move the next curve aside. Select these curves and then go to your surfaces and hit loft. Now that you have this, I might, you might want to scale it, but this is looking pretty good to me. Now I've already created a render cam. So a render cam is the camera that I'm going to be rendering through. So if I go to panels perspective, render cam, you'll see that it's there. And I don't like to see the corners or the edges there. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate it like this so that the infinity curve is mostly facing the character. And I might need to lift it because I don't think it's actually penetrating the base. So I think around here is pretty good. Now I feel like the curve is a little close to my character, so I might nudge it back a little bit, but this is going to give me some really nice results. Now, if you want to feel free to grab the curves and then do a control H, which will hide it. Okay. So why are we doing this? Well, we are trying to make our character stand out. And one of the ways we can do this is by making sure that we provide a studio lighting and that we provide something called rim lighting plus eye light. So we already set up the studio set. So we have a nice infinity curve. Now we need to set up the lighting. So I always go for Arnold lights, area lights. So again, I'm going to go to my perspective camera and I'm going to bring this up and it looks just like this. And you want that little line is sticking out of this square to be facing the character. Now I'd like to see what's going on in both views. So I'm going to click on this button and then let's go to my render cam and I'm going to scale. So this should be the side of the model. I shouldn't really be seeing an angle. This should be more like the side of the studio of the camera. So I can scoot this back and get some nice lighting out of it. Now I'm going to open up the attributes of the light and turn off normalize. Normalize, um, reduces the intensity as the light gets larger. And when I turn off normalize, basically it keeps the intensity as well as the scale. So let's see what that looks like at this time. It's a little dark, but I am liking the way the light hits the character on the right side and gives a nice, nice soft shadows on the left. So now that I have this one, I am going to call this my character's left. So I'm going to say left and I'm going to say this is her key light. I'm going to duplicate this light and move it to the other side. It's going to be the same idea that you want this light to be right next to the camera and the character. So it's somewhere in the middle. And of course, you always want the light to be facing her. So let's see what that looks like. So as you can see, the character is looking much more even. We can see the left side and the right side, and I should have done a snapshot of the other one, but that's okay. I'll snapshot this one. It's still very dark, but at least I'm getting the nice look. Now this is going to be the right side of the key, the right key light. Next, I want to do what's called rim lighting. Rim lighting is essential when you're trying to animate your character. Rim lighting basically means that the edges of your character is going to be highlighted. So it stands out outside of the environment. This is a very subtle addition, but it really makes a difference, especially when it comes to lighting. A lot of lighters will look at that and see where's the rim lighting. So make sure that you add rim lighting to your scene, to your characters. By the way, rim lighting is something that you should get into a habit of when you're animating your characters in a scene. Uh, every character in every movie has rim lighting, even if there's an environment in the background. It's actually, it's very important to make sure that your character stands out out of the scene. So that being said, I'm going to hide these key lights, control H, and I'm going to create a new light, a new area light. Again, my area lights are my favorite. So I'm going to make it bigger, turn off normalize. 
And some of the challenges with uh, rim lighting is that you want to make sure that the light is always facing the character, but this time the light is going to be behind a character. And I also encourage you guys to use this uh, resolution gate to kind of give you an idea of where to place the character. So for example, I'm going to lift this uh, light so that it hits the corner of the camera gate, and then I'm going to make sure that it's rotated and pointing at my character. Now again, I hit all my lights, so the only thing I'm going to see is the light. So let's see what that looks like. So as you can see, I can, I'm highlighting her hair, which looks very nice. I've got her neck. I just feel that it's a little too much. It needs to be nudged back a little bit more. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it back and just kind of nudge it backwards, maybe rotate it slightly. And let's see what that looks like. All right, so I nudged it a little bit more and you can see the difference between one rim light and the other one. It's just starting to highlight a little bit less of the front and it's more around the back. I could push this a little bit more, but I'm actually very happy with what it's doing to the hair, to the edges of the character, and even on the base. Now you'll also notice that it is costing a shadow back here and I can remove that by using what's called light linking. On the Windows Relationship Editor, light linking light centric. I know it's a long path, but what you can do is grab this area light and basically say, I don't want it to affect the lofted surface, which is my infinity curve. And if you don't like that lighting on the base, you might also want to turn off the base. This theoretically should only be impacting is the character, not everything else. So let's see what that looks like by using light linking. And there you go. You can see that we have just the rim lighting around the hair, around the character, and there's no lighting anywhere else, which is appropriate because I just want to make sure that it highlights the character alone. I might still want to push this just a little bit further back. And then I'm going to duplicate this light because I want this rim lighting to also be on the other side. I'm trying to highlight the character and the uh, on both sides. So again, I'm using this camera view to place the light and I'm making sure that the object is facing the character. And with the same exact settings of the other one, I haven't done anything else. Um, I probably will have to do a new light link, but let's see what we have so far. So you can see that the right side is being uh, showed off a little bit too much. Um, I only want to do a rim lighting. This is too far. So I'm going to go ahead and nudge it pretty far back, back behind her and rotate it. So again, I'm trying to just get the rim lighting for the character. And it also lights the environment. So let's do the same thing again. Windows, Relationship Editor, Light Linking, Light Centric, grab the area light and then turn off the loft lofted surface and the base. Let's see what that looks like. Now, as you notice, everything's really fast. It actually does take time for me to render. I just don't think it's necessary for you guys to watch this render. So what I'm doing is pausing, rendering it, and then you guys can see the results. So I'm pausing right now. All right, as you can see, I'm getting some nice rim lighting. Everything is dark around there, which is fine. I want my area lights to do the lighting for that. And I might want to rotate it slightly upward just because it's starting to highlight her collarbone, which I think is okay, but um, I'm just trying to get a nice rim lighting. So I'm going to rotate this upward. Maybe again, scoot it back. And let's see what that what we get from there. All right, so now that the lights are behind a character, you can see that I'm getting some really nice rim lighting around the hair, around the neck and the shoulder, and it's really showing off the character silhouette, which is very important when we're trying to light our character. So let's see what happens when we bring everything back. But first, let's uh, label everything. So this is the right character uh, rim lighting, and this is going to, and the other side is going to be the left side, obviously. Let me do a shift H on the hidden lights. So that brings back all the lights and let's take a render on what it looks like all together. So the scene is looking dark, but, and I'm gonna change the lighting a little bit in a second, but you can see that we're getting some nice uh, soft shadows in the background. So it does, the background doesn't stick out. The character is lit uniformly and we also have this really nice rim light. So this is what it looked like before and this is Whoops, let me take a snapshot of this before I forget. And this is what it looked after. And you can see that it really helps enhance the character's not only silhouette, it helps make the character stand out. Okay, so now we're gonna use some color theory to help push this scene a little bit further. So what I'd like to do is add a little bit of color to your lights. So for example, if I'm trying to make this character a little bit more warmer on the right side, then I would suggest that you make the other side slightly cooler by using blue. 
Blue usually makes things look further away and yellow makes things look closer or warmer colors make it look like it's closer and blue makes it look further away. It's just the ways our eyes are trained because of the sky and also a blue haze from afar. So we interpret blue as being cooler and further away. So instead of using blue on the left side, the character is a little bit closer on the left side to the camera. So I'm actually going to do the opposite. I'm going to warm the left side and cool the right side. And let's see what that looks like. All right, so you can see the difference between this one versus this one. It does make a difference. It gives it a lot more personality. It's a little bit still dark, so let's increase our intensity. So I'm gonna increase the right side to, let's say two, and actually I'm gonna increase the intensity for both of them at two. I do feel like the yellow is a little too yellow, so I may wanna go for a little bit whiter yellow, maybe slightly orange. Just a little bit, just to make it more interesting. Now, I also want the rim lighting to have some sort of color as well. So similar, the yellow, I'm gonna go ahead and grab that yellow color, and I might in increase that saturation of that yellow so that it can stand out on the rim lighting. And same thing with the blue, I'm gonna grab the blue light, and I'm gonna make it a little bit more blue. Um, I'm also think going to increase the intensity, well, before I make so many changes, let's see what this render is gonna look like. Okay, so this is what it looked like before. This is what it looks like now. The yellow does stand out a little bit. I might want to reduce that saturation. Maybe I went a little too far to the yellow. I don't need it to stand out too much. Uh, but the blue, I really like. I feel like the blue really works with what we have so far. Next is all about increasing the brightness. Now I am going to add one more light. This is going to be... I'm going to let you guys guess. Which one do you think I'm going to use? If you said area light, that is correct. I'm going to be using another area light. And usually I use this one to kind of fill the top. So by using this, it's going to help kind of bring out any, any last lights that might be a little dark. I'm going to use this to kind of help bring out that light. Again, don't forget to normal, uh, turn off normalize and let's see what that looks like. So you can see by adding that other light that suddenly we get a lot. Whoops, I didn't keep the other one. Uh, it's definitely a lot brighter, which I really like. I still feel all my other lights can be more intense. So let's go ahead and just crank up the values a little bit more. This one's going to be two. I'm going to make this three. I'm also going to make the other light three. I'm okay with the way the rim lighting is working. And let's see what that looks like. Everything is a little bit darker now. I mean, brighter, which is great. So now let's talk about the eye light. So the eye light is very important because the eyes are the windows to the soul and we want to make sure the lighting is appropriate. So yes, I'm going to create another area light, but this time instead of using a bunch of squares, I am going to change this into a circle. So take a look at the area light. Under light shape, you can change it into a disc. And what I'm trying to do is create a little bit of a highlight for the eyes. So I'm trying to, there it is. Let me get in front of that camera here. And the reality is, is that I just want this light to impact the eyes themselves. So I'm gonna call this my eye light. And I am going to hide all of the other lights so I can see what type of impact this light is bringing into my scene. So I'm going to bring it down just so I can see it. Uh, don't forget to turn off normalize and let's see what this eye light does. So you can see that there's a tiny little highlight and I'm going to get a little closer and I actually did a pretty good job. Uh, the goal here is to try to get this circle to be between the pupil and the iris and it's going to give you this really nice effect. Now I feel like this needs to be a tiny little bit higher. And it, I really like the placement of that highlight. Now it's a little dark, so I am going to increase the intensity. And I absolutely love the way that highlight is working on the eyes. However, I just want it to affect the eyes. I really don't want it to affect the character itself. So you guessed it, we're using the relationship editor. So let's go to Windows. Relationship Editor, Light Linking, Light Centric, and this time I'm going to grab the eye light and turn everything off except for the eye group. Don't forget to turn off the collection, and I actually even turn off everything else because I'm not a big fan, not the eyeballs, of it highlighting anything. Now double check sometimes by deselecting everything, it thinks you want to turn off everything, so just make sure that you open up your eye group and that geometry is in fact selected. So let's see what that looks like. Now, sometimes this happens. If you guys go to render update full scene, 
you get the results that you want. All right, so I'm liking that highlight. I'm gonna nudge it a little bit more forward over here. And by the way, they do this in film. It just really does a nice job illuminating the eye. All right, next I'm gonna bring back all the lights. So as you can see, everything's looking really nice. I like the way everything's lit. I am getting a little extra highlights from the other lights. So what I'm gonna do is go back into the light linking. And I know this is my uh, key lights, so I might turn off just a cornea though, uh, the side light. So my key light, my rim lighting, the area at the top and eye light will be the one that's illuminate, illuminating the eye. Again, make sure you update your scene and let's see what that looks like. Bunch of lights, I am going to increase my intensity to my area light, uh, my eye light, and let's see what that looks like. If you zoomed in, make sure you click on one one. And this is what I have so far. Um, I like the way the rim lighting's looking. I like the placement of my key of my eye light. I might scale it just a tiny little bit smaller. And I like the way everything is rendered. If you want, you can see how it looks like if you want a little bit more gamma. So if that's the case, then what I would suggest is that um, you might want to increase the values of the light, which I think I will. So up here at the top, right next to your render settings, there is a light editor. And since I'm ready to start uh, increasing the intensity and also my samples so I can get a higher quality render, the light editor is actually really great. So what I can do is go in and change the key light, for example, right here off the top to maybe a uh, four. And I can also grab this one, which is the rim. I'm okay with the rim lighting. This is the key light for and if I want to increase the top, I can increase this to a three. Another thing that I can do is select all of these lights together by holding down shift and clicking, and I can change my samples to three. I wouldn't go any higher than that because that will increase your render time significantly with very little results. The other thing I'm gonna do is go to my render settings and I do want a higher quality uh, image size. So right now my image size is HD 540. I'm gonna change that to 720. And then I'm gonna to go to the Arnold Render. I do have a video where it goes over all of these things, but I'm gonna go ahead and crank this up to um, probably five, three, three. I do have subsurface transmission. I really don't have fog, so I can probably drop that. I'm also gonna turn on adaptive sampling and I'm gonna leave it at seven. So it goes between five and seven. Again, I have a whole video about what all of this stuff means. So I'll, I'll leave a link below so that you guys can find it and find out about why this stuff is important and why it's a terrible idea to crank all these values up. So make sure that you control what you're doing. All right, that being said, this is probably gonna take a little while to render. So I'm gonna hit pause and I will be right back. And there you have it. You have a nice lit character with some nice rim lighting, with nice uh, studio lighting as well, a nice key light or a nice eye light here to give you the nice highlight on the eye. And we also have light at the top, so it gives you this nice, uh, it captures all of the specularity of your character. So hopefully you guys found that helpful. Let me know by leaving a comment below. If you guys are curious in developing this character from skin to X-Gen hair, X-Gen eyebrows, X-Gen eyelashes, and also subsurface scattering, take a look at all the videos because you can actually make this your own. And you can find all those videos below. So again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found it useful. If you did find it useful, please like and subscribe because that encourages me to make more videos like these. And also don't forget to take a look at academicphoenixplus.com where you can find three free 3D models, free tutorials, eBooks, and so much more. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. And uh, you can also sign up for my newsletter for the new things that are coming up soon. If you know somebody that might be interested in lighting their character better, then please share my videos. That would be amazing. And tag me on social media because I love seeing your work. So I'm in Instagram and I'm also in Twitter and Facebook. So please tag me so I can take a look at all the cool work that you guys are creating. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Keep creating and I will see you next time.